right, in this first item, we're asked to find the displacement out here at the tip of the cantilever, delta C, given the loading and the situation, which is statically indeterminate in the first degree, but we are also given what the moment diagram is, and we're given the qualitative deflected shape. And so from there, um, we can easily apply the moment area method, which is the method that we're asked to do noting that this joint of the beam column intersection here is a rigid joint. It starts off at 90 degrees and rotates and is still at 90 degrees for, uh, for the two members. So a key thing here is recognizing that that joint rotates the same on all sides. So that's theta B and that's theta B also. And when we extend that tangent, then all the way across the rest of the structure, then we find out that this displacement that's happening out here at C can be thought of as two pieces. It can be thought of as the piece that comes from the rotation that happens here at B and it can be thought of as this piece that goes from that tangent down to the deflected shape, which is the very essence of the definition of a tangential deviation, in this case of C with respect to the tangent that was drawn back at B. Right? So since the distance from B to C is 12 feet and opposite over adjacent is equal to tangent, and because the tangent of the angle is going to be approximately equal to theta b in terms of radians as a small angle theory. Not drawn that way, but certainly mathematically will work out that way. Then this delta c is just the sum of these two pieces. Now if we hadn't been asked to use the moment area method, we could have gone and, and dealt with this <clears throat> perhaps in, uh, using some superposition of beam tables or that sort of thing. But we have been asked to use uh, the uh, moment area method. So we come back and recognize that at A we've got a fixed end, so there's no rotation, so its tangent just marches right along in the undisplaced position. And so that means that when we look at the tangent to B and the tangent to A, since that angle right there is also because that's tangent at A and that's tangent at B, then this angle is theta B with respect to A and theta B will equal theta B with respect to A. It will also be plus theta A, but theta A itself is zero. So with that then, we really only have two quantities to go calculate and we've got the requested item. So let's go make it happen. Right, so number one, let's go find theta b. That's equal to theta b with respect to a. And that's going to be first moment area theorem. That's just the area between these two um, two points. Under the m over ei diagram, we have the moment diagram. There's two different signs. There's a plus and a minus. And so we've got one half of 14.4 kip feet times this height. Right now, notice the 2 to 1 ratio that we have here. So that means that this 0 point for the moment, which is also an inflection point, is going to be set up in this 2 to 1 ratio. Since the whole length is 9, that makes this 3 foot. And that makes that 6 foot. So this area that we're dealing with down here, this first area, 1 half of this base times that height of 3 feet. And then we're going to go the other direction at 1 half of then, let's see, that base is 28.8 kip feet, and that height is 6 feet. And all of that then gets divided by EI, since that's constant for everything here. So we got 14.4 times 3 divided by 2 minus, then 28.8 times 6 divided by 2, and that's a minus 64.8. Eight. Now, kip feet squared over EI. Now, the minus sign is only telling us here 
the that the rotation is <coughs> clockwise, right? Note back here on our deflected shape that that positive area. If we had gone from here to three foot up, we would have gotten a positive area, and that would have been rotating clearly this direction, meaning counterclockwise. And then we're swinging it back the other direction. So that net here is really just telling us that theta b is going in the direction that we had assumed, or 64.8 kip feet squared over ei in the um, clockwise direction. So that's theta b. Then we, we're going to eventually multiply that by 12 feet, but let's go get the tangential deviation next. Tangential deviation C with respect to B, that's the second moment area theorem. That's going to be the area of M over EI take, um, between the two points of interest, that's B and C. So that's a second order curve with a zero slope here. So that means that we have a vertex over here. That means the area is one third of the base of 12 feet times the height of 28.8. That is a negative kip foot there, and then the moment arm then is going to be with respect to the point of interest. So there's our little moment arm that we got to deal with, and with the second order curve that has the vertex, we're at three quarters point, three quarters of 12, which equals nine feet. And so that will turn out to be One thousand thirty-six point eight kip foot cubed over EI. It is negative, which means that it goes downwards, which is what we've got shown here. That we were here at at point C, at the tangent from the projected tangent at B. We go from there downwards to get to the delta C. Right. So that lets us then get to where we were desiring. Delta C equals twelve foot theta B plus TCB, and so we've got a downwards of 12 feet times our 64.8 kip foot squared over EI, and then well, that's going downwards plus the other part that's going downwards, 1036.8 kip feet cubed over EI, and so that will be total of 1814.4 kip foot cubed over EI, again going downwards. So now let's go get the final number here by substituting in. So delta C equals 1814.4 kip foot cubed divided by 29,000 kips per square inch times the second moment of area of 118 inches to the fourth. Oh dear, we've got then uh, in the denominator, kip inch squared total, and we got kip foot cubed up in the top. So let's take 12 inches per foot, cube the whole thing. That'll be 1728 is what that's going to be. Divided by 29,000, divided by 118, and we get then 0 0.92 inches going downwards for the answer that has been requested.